Yo, what's good? Uh, B-W-I-Z-E, man. Uh, I'm just sitting here thinking. I just put this face, this post on Facebook about uh, uh, Ronald, uh, what is his name? Ronald Gasser uh, and the incident that just happened with Joe McKnight. Um, I want people to understand something. This situation was, ironically, just like the Will Smith situation. Uh, when Will Smith, a uh, former New Orleans Saints player, uh, was killed uh, by an African-American man in the same situation. Okay. Notice something about this situation, though. Mr. Ron, or Ron, Ronald Gasser, was uh, released from jail. Right? They said they were interviewing him. Released from jail. Now, the story is... And I do have to fact check this, so any of my viewers, please let me know if I'm wrong. So the story was, according to the news, uh, that these guys got into an altercation. Mr. Um, uh, McKnight stepped out of his car. Mr. Gasser stepped out of his car. Uh, words were exchanged. And Ronald pulls out a gun and shoots Joe McKnight. Now the report said that Joe didn't have... Mr. McKnight didn't have a gun on him. Uh, no form of weapon. Now remember that Louisiana does have the stand your ground law. So if a person feels threatened, they have the right to use deadly force if they if they if they feel like their life is in danger. But keep in mind that Joe had no weapons. He had no no witnesses said that he was threatening Ronald, Mr. Gasser, nothing like that. The story goes is that uh, Mr. Gasser uh, pulls up, Ronald pulls up on Joe, Mr. McKnight, and shoots him with deadly force, shoots him. After uh, Mr. McKnight is in a defenseless position, Ronald stands over him, Mr. Gasser stands over him and shoots him and says, don't F with me. Now, keep in mind, this is in the same city where, not too long ago, a former NFL player, Will Smith, was shot by a guy in a road rage incident, very similar to this. The defendant who shot Mr. Smith was immediately apprehended and taken to jail and still sits in jail today. Ronald, Ronald Gasser, shoots not only shoots, um, not only shoots Joe McKnight once, but stands over him to make a statement to let him know that this guy is dead. And I'm gonna bring up the Trayvon Martin situation because I want to compare these two. And before I even go there, I want to uh, tell people that. You know, Mr. By the way, Ronald Gasser is white. Joe McKnight is black. Um, Joe McKnight was an NFL player who played for the Kansas City Chiefs and the New York Jets. Uh, he was originally a New Orleans native, and he was a professional athlete. Now they're saying that it was not racially motivated, but anybody knows, everybody knows that race has to do something with it. A little bit about Mr. Ronald Gasser. If you pull up his record, back. And I can't remember the year. He was involved in a same incident to where it was in a road rage. He followed the guy at a service station. There was words exchanged. They fought. And he was charged with battery. But the, the charges was dropped. But I want to keep in mind. I want you guys to keep in mind. the These three separate incidents. Trayvon Martin stand your ground. You have Joe McKnight stand your ground. Um, and the stand your ground clause wasn't even in, wasn't even admissible uh, when Will Smith got killed. But I want you to think about this. And there's so many different elements that I don't really have time to talk about it. The main thing I want to focus on is this guy getting, getting a somewhat away with uh, dodging a murder charge. He was, they're pursuing manslaughter. They're not even pursuing 
a murder in the first, second, or third degree. They're pursuing manslaughter. Keep in mind, not too long ago, Will Smith, another football player, was involved in a similar altercation. The defendant shot Will Smith, killed him right in front of his family, and was apprehended right there, and he is still awaiting trial today. This guy shoots Mr. Big Knight. Uh, he's in a defenseless position, stands over him and shoots him. The cops come, they interview him, they let him go. Okay, they let him go. Question I want to pose. If Louisiana is to stand your ground law, and they're saying that the defendant in the Will Smith case, if he would have stated that same thing, now actually, he actually uh, inadvertently said that when he said, when it was claims that he said that there was a gun. That Mr. S he saw a gun that Mr. Smith had. Now keep in mind, listen to what I'm saying. Mr. Smith, the defendant in the Will Smith case, said that he had a gun. He pulled a gun to defend himself. But yet he was taken to jail and apprehended right doing right not too long after the kill or whenever the cop showed up. Ronald Gasser was said that he feared for his life. And the cops already, the, the uh, interviewing process or the, the report already shows that Mr. Joe McKnight didn't have any weapons on him. Any, any weapons on him. But Mr. Gasser says, well, oh, I fear for my life. And they let this dude go. Now, am I missing something here? Because you have two scenarios. One white, one black, and then two black men. In a state that says stand your ground and if Mr. Gasser Ronald Gasser is going to be uh, given the opportunity or pursued uh, pursued uh, in this case for manslaughter why shouldn't he defend it in Will Smith's case have the same issue and it's not about it's necessarily not about you know who the, who the person was before I'm looking at it from a the court, the court's eye, the court's eye, because obviously, what this man got, this man should have Ronald Gasser, who stood over this man and shot him to death, who basically um, shot him in a mafia style type killing, should have got the same treatment as the murderer, uh, the defendant, should I say, in uh, Will Smith's case. But this is what we go through, guys. This is what we have to speak out against injustice. We have to speak out against injustice and we have to make it verbally known. We have to be able to live it. We have to be able to understand what is going on. Guys, we are in the middle of a war. And regardless of what critics say, interviewers say, whatever, regardless of what the papers say, I personally believe that this was racially motivated. Because too many people that are of color, that are of African descent, that are black, Males specifically are being targeted, are being targeted, and Caucasians people know they can get away with it. Are they gonna slap me on the wrist? I personally believe um, that what really got this ball rolling became a domino effect was when uh, Trayvon Martin was killed, and the stand your ground law was. Uh, was really became at the forefront. There was another case that I saw in 2020. It was a couple years ago. I think it was not too long after the Trayvon Morton case about stand your ground. There was a Hispanic male, and I can't remember the the actual names and titles or whatever. There was a Hispanic male who um, he had a next door neighbor that was Caucasian, and. They were playing their music too loud. They're playing their music too loud. The gentleman came over and asked the the Caucasian gentleman, the Hispanic gentleman, came over and asked the Caucasian gentleman, "Can you turn his music down?" He refused to turn his music down. Uh, the Hispanic gentleman asked him again, came over again, "Can you please turn your music down?" The third time, the Hispanic uh, gentleman went over. Um, he was confronted. When, according to the story, he was confronted 
by these group, this his Caucasian neighbors, and his life felt threatened. His life felt threatened. He used the gun, he shot the guy, and he killed the guy. And I want to say this is in Texas. I, I, I want to say this is in Texas, but I'm not exactly sure. But wherever it was, it was a stand your ground state. It was a stand your ground state. Once again, this gentleman was apprehended immediately, and I believe he still was charged for murder. Now, that's four cases that had stand your ground law. One and all, the only one that was. Uh, the only one that wasn't treated fairly, in my opinion, is the one that had the Caucasian uh, gentleman when it comes to Stand Your Ground Law. So I pose the question, is Stand Your Ground only a way to, does it apply to everybody? If the system is, a, is, a, is supposed to support us and the laws that they give us, is it really a neutral ground for everybody to be uh to be to for everybody to be able to uh use that law from a racial standpoint because i just gave you four examples three examples involve people of color a hispanic and two black guys both of them felt as though three all three of the uh people of color uh Example: All three of them felt as though that they, um, I'm sorry, the two, uh, the one in New Orleans and the Hispanic guy, felt as though uh, that they were, their life was put in danger. And according to their laws in their particular state, they used their force. They, they used their, um, they used their, their, what they felt as though they needed to do. Now, this is a matter, this is not a matter of, this is not a matter of the moral code. It's a matter about principle, about using, uh, and what I'm trying to show here is the injustice that is used of how certain ethnicities and people only are subjected, uh, or only have an advantage to the law than everybody else. So the Hispanic guy who shot the guy, I believe it was in Texas, stand your ground law, and the defendant who shot Will Smith, both stated, both stated that their life was in danger. But yet they were apprehended. Trayvon Martin, George Zimmerman, stated that he felt, stated that he felt, that he felt he was under, uh, that he, his life was in danger. Yet, Mr. Trayvon Martin had no gun, had no weapon. Joe McKnight, Joe McKnight had no weapon. Maybe exchange words, but had no weapon. On top of that, Mr. Ronald Gasser stands over this man, shoots this man, then stands over him and kills him off this time. So you tell me, ladies and gentlemen, is the law really for us as a people? Or is it for certain people? And where we are right now as a people, we need to start waking up, we need to start educating ourselves, we need to start taking care of ourselves mentally, physically, because whatever you've been taught, Whatever you've been taught, you need to rethink. This is BWIZE. Continue to check me out. I'm going to uh, be coming up with a lot more videos. Click the links. Click the links. Click the links. Click the links. Wherever I am, wherever the link is, make sure you click it. Make sure you follow. And also, man, share this video because this is educational. This is what people need to know. And even if you're Caucasian, understand that I am not going after white people. I fight racism. I fight the idea of racism. So if you are racist, regardless of what color you are, I'm fighting against you. You are my enemy. Um, but I do not hate white people. I do not hate I hate the ideology of racism. So that's what I'm fighting, fighting against. B-W-I-Z-E www.ubewize.com We out.